who here remembers me saying this, right? You guys know me. I'm a humble person, but I, I come on, guys, on this one. How many times did I say when I first started covering Jasmine, especially last year and, and getting more towards, I would say, second quarter or going into, you know, like summer? I said, basically speaking, I have a feeling that Jasmine will be the first, right? The first to really take off before everything else. And why did I say that? Because I said, Japan, Japan basically has embraced blockchain and DLT. And they have in place the blueprint, which obviously is data free flow with trust, right? You know, that's why you see Taro Kono campaigning for all this technology taking it to everywhere, right? So they're the ones that, you know, ready, embrace Web3, all this stuff. So, you know, again, I said, watch out. I honestly think Jasmine be the first to do it. And what do you see right now? I mean, let's face it, it, it this is a bull market. I mean, we have not seen the overall market at $2 trillion since the last particular bull run of 2021. So it, it's fair enough to say, yes, crypto winter is over and we're in a bull market. But people have pointed out and asked me or you guys have mentioned it too. Which one do you feel as though will be first? And I was pretty consistent about that. And for the reasons why, not just because, oh, hey, it's a cool thing to say, but it's like, well, if you've done the research, and we have as a community, good God, have we done the research. That further solidified that. And if anything, we were now seeing the fruits of that labor. Very cool stuff. So that said, what we're going to do now is actually share just a tad bit more jasmine with you right like i mentioned there's two parts so next part i want to get into i thought was crucial so jesse reported this Corey bebe even in our comments right shout out to beebs he mentioned this as well and i thought hey this is going to be great for the outline so like you see on the screen jesse heard this same thing this morning that the nikkei the case, I should say, last record high was nearly 35 years ago. Today's uh, Japan is basically making real financial waves. And Jasmine US also posted this. Um, the Nikkei, 225 jumped nearly 2% to hit 39,029, surpassing the previous record high of 38,915 reached in what? 1989. Very, very interesting, right? Japan is turning bullish for risk on assets. Well, I thought this was worth getting into. And if anything, this is from mainstream news, right? <clears throat> Might not mention Jasmine, but the point is mainstream news. So Japan have this report. Everybody's talking about CNBC. And again, some of the key points is like what you saw from, um, you know, Mr. Jasmine was it Jasmine US that posted that? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I think all this is worth pointing out, especially to you guys. But this whole thing of Asia Pacific, right? Nikkei and topics stand out um, outperformance in Asia Pacific up more than 10% in 2024, surging more than 25% in 2023, the respective big or best annual gain in at least a decade. So, you know, you got to get credit where credit is due. And it's these milestones, in my opinion, you know, like Jasmine hit a big milestone recently with some of these huge pumps. And if anything, we'll, we might wake up in the morning and see it happen again. But getting more into this, I thought I would start off with this as well. And if anything, this was a really well put together recording, in my opinion. Um, I think Neo X Tricks is using AI to do this, which is cool. So you guys know me, I do follow Neo. He's a great proponent of, for instance, Jasmine. He just hit like 2K followers. So I tip my hat off to him. Provides great content to the Jasmine community. But he posted this video yesterday. It's not really a video, kind of, right? You don't see a lot of movement, but it's the message, okay? A lot of times we see, whether it's Kunitaki Ando, or in this case, Kazuma Sasato, we hear them talk, but we don't get the interpretation. So I thought I'd share this with you guys, right? Because I thought this was very, very well done from Neo. By the way, he updated his avatar. 
He looks sharp, right? He says, in the thoughts of Kazuma Sasato and Jasmine towards a revolution in IoT, Internet of Things, data management with blockchains. This is three minutes. We got to have a little something that's interactive, visuals and so on, right? To kind of keep you guys into it. Listen to what was interpreted originally from Kazuma Sasato from Neo Extrix and providing it to you guys in what? In English. How cool is that? Smash the like. Only about three minutes, give or take. We'll come back into this. It's going to be a solid outline. Again, appreciate you guys being here. Let's go ahead and play this. Here we go. Up until now on the internet, data has been concentrated in companies like the GAFA. However, we believe that if customers have sovereignty over their data, we can provide user-centric data management. There are ways to utilize them. System information configurations have shifted from centralized using GAFA to decentralized with what's known as Web 3.0, Web 3. Now the era of decentralized edge computing has arrived. The challenge is how to control data in such a situation. Consider a move in an era where information is collected from the edge. Household devices have sensors, memory, and processors enabling comfortable use based on consumer data. However, when moving, managing data from installed home devices like air conditioners, intercoms, and smart meters becomes challenging. If each device manages data individually, transferring or deleting data becomes difficult. Entrusting complete management to a data service provider allows using existing data in the new location without leaving any in the old home but all personal data is locked by the service provider. Jasmine considers using blockchain for IoT data management, emphasizing data democratization as controlling one's data. The democratization of data involves owning and controlling the data one creates, legally speaking. Jasmine's IoT platform, including solutions and IoT devices using blockchain, addresses this. SKC, Secure Knowledge Communicator, manages various people's data securely and centrally, while SG, Smart Guardian, securely records IoT devices on a proprietary blockchain network, allowing only the owner to use them. These services rely on blockchain technology, but Jasmine doesn't develop blockchain tech in-house, preferring to leverage external advancements. Regarding databases, Jasmine currently uses cloud storage, considering distributed database solutions underdeveloped. As an example, Jasmine proposes storing and using individuals' platinum data in a personal data locker, allowing users to control this platinum data, including non-personal information. By utilizing Jasmine's IoT platform, one can create an environment where data can be used freely and securely in various domains, offering diverse applications. One application is a digital twin, effectively using the blockchain to verify identity and prevent unauthorized control in the virtual space. It's also applicable to carbon credits, ensuring accurate IoT data measurement for efficient carbon credit market use. Jasmine collaborates with Japan Travel, enabling controlled data transmission for personalized travel experiences. The patented technology allows adjusting the granularity of transmitted information. As privacy concerns rise, people are becoming more cautious about disclosing digital data. The original internet aimed to recognize diversity, but with the advance of big data, efficiency and categorization have overshadowed diversity. As we progress, data democratization becomes crucial in accepting more diversity in society. All right, so obviously big shout out to Neo X Tricks for putting that together. Very educational, and if anything, you know, it's not just like looking at Sato-san sharing, um, you know, his you know, doing the whole thing in Japanese, which is fine, and just reading a bunch of subtitles, right? So whatever Neo is using, and if you're watching Neo at some point, wow, very cool what you're doing with your AI pro, uh, program, right? It is much appreciated. So I want to now jump on over to another key thing that we're going to get into, and it is this. You see it in the title, and basically speaking, it is in regards to something that hara posted about now if you follow hara on x you will notice this particular tweet and if anything this is not um you know shitoshi kusama posting cryptic tweets this is a real person not to say that shitoshi kusama is not a real person i mean i hold shit right but the point is this is not a cryptic tweet okay he gives us a little taste of what is to come but you know me 
I was like, what is this? This is interesting. And I didn't see anybody talking about it. Let's talk about it. It's Jenkshin, if I'm pronouncing that right. And I've seen other people, and some of you guys have been DMing me about this. Can you look into it? Well, I can't pull something out of my magic hat, right? You know, not like that, right? But look at this for a second. So he posted this as an Hara to celebrate his 50,000 followers. He's updating his profile and unveiling the new design um, of their service, which is Jenkshin. Now, if you look at his profile, it says that he's the CFO of Jasmine. Um, and it says IoT and DID platformer, CEO of Jenkshin, which some people are like, huh, that's a new thing. But next to it, it says D-Pin and AI permissionless Shane. And basically speaking, this is where, excuse me, I'm just kind of getting used to this new headset. This is where it caught my interest because I say to myself, <clears throat> you got to keep in mind that when it comes to Jasmine, we understand that we're going to go through this layer two. And it's not just a layer two on optimism. It's supposed to be a like a layer two AI style blockchain type of solution. And, when, and that sounds so cool. You know, we understand we got this whole thing of a Web3 cloud storage, you know, with Polkadot. So all these things are exciting. And we've already been there. We've done that, right? We've done AMAs about it. But some people just don't know what Jankshin is. And I don't, for the most part, you know, I didn't know what it was. And so it caught my interest, curiosity, and so on. And I kept coming towards roadblocks and just getting nowhere with it. But then finally I decided, well, what's one thing I like to do? Connect the dots, right? And so I said, don't focus on one thing. Don't get tunnel vision on that. Look into the next thing, the D pin. So for the most part, a lot of us know about D pin. You've seen some other AMAs talk about D pin. And the combination, like it says, a D pin with AI permissionless chain, I think this is a taste of what's to come. So I'm going to go ahead and retweet this for you guys. And let's take you over to this. This is good stuff, in my opinion, because it's going to give you a broader understanding of the bigger picture. Now, this is not me trying to, you know, come up with something out of nothing. Um, but this is cool. And why is it so cool? And why is it we're sharing with you guys? Well, for one, everybody wants something new in regards to Jasmine. Let's just be honest about that. You're so excited. You just can't hide it, right? <laughs> and you're seeing your portfolio blast off and everybody's wondering, well, what's the next big positive catalyst for Jasmine? And come on guys. Um, you want to, you want to find that out. I want to find that out. Look what's mentioned on the screen. February 20th, just literally two days ago. Look what it says. And this is cited. If you're wondering where it comes from coin telegraph, I cite a lot of things from CoinDesk, coin telegraph, anything that's valid. Okay. But decentralized physical infrastructure network, D pin explain. For a lot of us, we don't know what D pin is. But to see this, where it says from Hara, right? Jankshin times D pin, or was it D pin times, excuse me, AI blockchain? Even if we can't find the, the info on Jankshin anywhere, we could at least look into this. And draw our own conclusion. So here we go. What is DPIN? What does it mean? Well, like it says, decentralized physical infrastructure networks, DPIN, refer to the application of blockchain tech and decentralized principles to physical infrastructure systems. Talks about this whole thing, for instance, about paradigm shift. I don't want to get into that. What I want to get into this is right here in regards to more DPIN. It says enter decentralized physical infrastructure, which is deepens a novel, excuse me, a novel concept that extends the ethos of decentralization to tangible infrastructure, promising to reshape industries, empower individuals, unprecedented ways. The pins enable autonomous real-time interactions. Have it not caught your attention? Real-time interactions, autonomous inside physical infrastructures through what technologies? Smart contracts. Ooh. Internet of Things. Isn't Jasmine all that and then some? Yeah, it is. Increasing system responsiveness 
adaptability to human demands. Interesting, right? So after the initial narratives around value stores like Bitcoin, because let's face it, BTC is referred to as, you know, a store of value, digital gold. But back to the whole thing we just showed you tonight in regards to uh, Neo's, you know, little AI video he made in regards to Jasmine with platinum data. I'm, I'm still saying I still haven't seen a lot of us doing that. Maybe it's got to be myself or Jesse or Rob or whoever leading the charge and doing this. But, you know, everything for the most part that has value, let's face it, whether you think it's corny or not, has slogans. We should literally do a slogan of, you know, like BTC had its time of digital gold, store of value, Jasmine, platinum data. I mean, I, I we need to see more of that. If we're a community, come together, literally tag platinum data or jasmine platinum data because it's even written in the white paper right so again let's get back to this for a second this whole thing of d pin leveraging blockchain tech to improve security efficiency transparency and physical systems such as renewable energy grids think about that for a second let's pause there for a second renewable energy grids how many times i did a collaboration with for instance not just neo x tricks but I i'll give kudos we haven't heard this guy in a while, right? Shout out to our brother, Mena Logwar. Yes, Mena Logwar. He deserves all the credit in the world because he would provide me with a lot of information and vice versa. We pointed out the importance of one key person who is the unsung hero of Jasmine, and that is Tadashi Marita. He's well-renowned in regards to what, guys? Renewable energy but especially when it comes to microgrid technology. Yes, microgrid. So everything you mentioned that, that's mentioned here in regards to D-pins, even though you don't see it mentioned specifically Jasmine, understand what has happened recently with price action. And like we talked about at the very beginning of the show or other shows recently, and that is what's happening in Japan and these bills that were passed or amendments that were made in regards to these acts and how we pointed out last year, not just myself, Jesse pointed this out as well, and other content creators and people also who don't even do YouTube who are part of the community. And that is, it's the things that are in place, right? Before they happened, you know? And how these things will be big as time goes on and Japan, for instance, like passes things, watch out for the ones that really lay down the framework. Watch out for the ones that are already regulatory compliant. And if anything, the Bitcoin is Japan. Hence, Jasmine. So DPIN, like it says, unchangeable records for product provenance and supply chain, ensuring authenticity, transparency for manufacturing and delivery. Decentralized it basically decentralizes itself and democratizes what access to energy resources by enabling solar paneled homes to sell at, you know excess energy you name it data democracy there's another case of that right so there's a lot of things in regards to the origins and the evolution of all this and i don't want to get into too much of it because there's a lot of that nerd talk but i want to get into some other things and i love how they reference filecoin because i mean you know i love filecoin it's another one's really doing well and i know i don't talk about filecoin enough but it's the common things that are associated with the greater picture of things like a while back i mentioned even with filecoin if jasmine could capture a piece of the filecoin pie what would that be worth for jasmine and we're talking about multiple layers of utility jasmine is not just one area focused it's not a mean token that just hopes for future utility and it's only one thing, right? Internet of Things is a huge thing. Finance democracy, huge thing. How about this trade? Like we cited originally from, let me come back into this. What was the site? Um, this right here. Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, right? So yes, Jasmine has to get the honorable mention in regards to that as well. But let's take you back here, okay? So 
I want you guys to understand how D pens work real quick, and then we're gonna get into some of the real juicy stuff, as Boomer F and Sooner would say. D pens span and how it goes, it, it blankets so many different domains. Energy systems for peer-to-peer -peer renewable energy, trading, supply chains for increased transparency. Let's go back to this trading. So for Hara to not come out with the info yet, and for whether it's me or whoever who's doing the research for you guys, connecting the dots, whatever you want to call it, understand how huge and massive this is. It's the timing of all this stuff. You don't have to be a rocket science or scientist to understand how huge this is because you just need to, as Biggie would say, relax and take notes. Because here is it again, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. The bill, you know, the update, February 16, 2024, approved the bill to partially amend Industrial Competitiveness Enhancement Act, promote the creation of new business and incentive or investment in the industry. The outline of everything that's mentioned here, from small to medium enterprises to large scale, it's incentivizing and doing what? Utilize, utilizing some of these things and how it just breaks it all down for the future. So I don't want to talk your head off about this, but I do think it's important to recognize all this. And here's another good part about it. All right. D pins span. Again, back to the renewable energy. We talked about Mr. Tadashi Morita and how, how significant he is. And if you haven't seen any videos about him and you're new to Jasmine and you want to understand the greater picture of things, you need to check out, go to the video section of Maximus Crypto, and literally you could type in Tadashi or you just look in the thumbnail, right? It shows him and it talks about microgrid technology. So you need to understand him to have a better idea. And if you don't care about the research, that's okay too. Maybe you're the type of person who's just like, eh, I just enjoy the show and I'm not really that into it. But for some people, it's like they're excited to see that this is really taken off. Once you want to learn as much as you can possibly could about why you're so gung-ho about this, no pun intended, with the gung-ho reference, right? So again, Supply chains, the efficiency of it, telecommunications. Again, how many things we could reference here? Telecommunications would totally reference Transcosmos. What about the other one recently in regards to workflows, data flows, right? The partner up with Jasmine. That's more utility in motion. But when I got down to this part, I said to myself, my God, look at this. Data storage, Jasmine's doing that. Web3, uh, you know, storage solution with Polkadot. Secure and distributed data management. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe the secure PC, maybe a PDL. How about this transportation for decentralized mobility solutions? A pairing with what? The DD coin. Remember, it's not me talking about it. Jesse did an excellent job talking about it. A lot of people talked about it from our community. Well into crypto winter when people said, I don't see the whole thing of, uh, I don't see price action. You're not understanding the greater picture, right? Not you guys specifically, but they're not understanding the greater picture of things. I'm glad that Jasmine did what it did during the crypto winter because look at where we're at now and look where we're going to take it to the next level. Talks about real estate. What did we see from her recently in regards to info on past recent AMAs dating back, I think, to January 19th, right? We've had a few AMAs since then, but talked about RWAs, real world assets. Boom, another reference to real estate. And it gets better, you guys, if you're still with me. And that is to understand how D-pins work, you have to consider D-pin application in the energy industry. Yes, decentralized energy grid. Tadashi Morita, once again, microgrid technology. In this setup, individual solar panel houses can produce energy efficiency, so on and so forth. But this part is, the, in my opinion, the juicy stuff. And here it is. It states that every transaction, whether it involves production, consumption, or a sale or sale of energy is documented on blockchain, ensuring openness, confidence between parties. When particular criteria is met, 
Like when excess energy is available for sale, smart contracts automatically carry out these transactions, ensuring efficiency and reliability in energy distribution. Hey, so don't overthink about it. Energy distribution and the transactions that are involved. And then what about securitizing that through what? The personal data locker which is the main utility, which is the main platform, the, the highlight of what Jasmine has always mentioned and provided and so on, right? But we're going to get this finally, you know? People say, well, this is still speculative. Call it what you want, but they put into place what needed to happen for they can scale. Look, a little about, look at this just a little bit more. This is good stuff. In addition to optimizing energy distribution based on current supply and demand, again, think about this for a second. What have you seen with Jasmine? A reaction, you know, a, a reaction from an action, right? Every action has a reaction, right? Based off of what you saw recently with Japan. It doesn't matter if it's if it's crypto or even stock market. What, what, what makes um, things go parabolic in the stock market? It's when supply and demand kicks in. So based on... Current supply and demand decentralized model promotes the utilization of renewable energy sources. Can we pause and think about that for a second? Right? There's so many utility layers to Jasmine that I don't think the average person can wrap their head around it all. But we do our best to research this stuff. Hence why the program is always called DYOR with Max. But in reality, it's DYOR with our community. So this encourages the development of a more robust, sustainable energy environment and lessens reliance on large centralized power facilities. Right. The opposite of what GAFA is all about. Depends democratize energy production and distribution in the energy industry by enabling people to become products, consumers, commonly, or commonly referred to as prosumers. Interesting. This makes energy more accessible, equitable, and it gets better, guys. Some decentralized energy systems incentivize users with what, guys? Cryptocurrency or digital tokens in exchange for the energy they contribute to the network. Have you been following Jasmine for over a year? Have you been following long before I covered it? Are you new to Jasmine? Whatever the case be, understand this and don't ever get it twisted. If you truly understand the utility of Jasmine, this speaks Jasmine 100%. Now, why is that? Because it further solidifies all the research for the last couple of years about, you know, where they started originally with the white paper and where they're going when it comes to this whole layer two, the storage solution, you name it. Because the token itself, right, Jasmine, by activating a personal data locker would, like it says, highlight on your screen, incentivize users with cryptocurrency. What cryptocurrency? The Jasmine coin. Or digital tokens in exchange for the energy they contribute to the network. How so? The pairings. Remember how I made so much a big deal about that for the longest time? I said, watch out for pairings. Pairings are the enablers. They are the, your plug. They are your connect. Everything involved with cryptocurrency has to have a proper pairing. And we've seen this, not just with Jasmine, but other ones, right? Your circle with whatever. Your tether with whatever. What about Jasmine, not just with whatever, but Jasmine pairings with, for instance, JPY, right? With DD, you name it. Even the ones that are foreign stable coins, your USDC. And you can watch that particular deep dive too. Talks about the unbanning of Circle in Japan. Tether's still banned. But what happens when that gets unbanned? That's even more volume. And that's a big, huge deal. So token rewards, like I said, serve as a compelling incentive for stakeholders to invest, maintain, and utilize the infrastructure, ensuring its growth, sustainability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This last part. Or it's just a second to last part. <clears throat> I know this is a deep dive, but this is good stuff because it's brand new. It's only two days old. Tokenization in which tangible assets such as real estate, artwork, commodities are represented as digital tokens on a blockchain to enable lies, or enable decentralized ownership trading. We understand that. 
this part <clears throat> got to get into the scalability because Jasmine's looking to scale. Blockchain must be capable of handling high volume transactions and data through the support, the demands of decentralized physical networks, and it all comes together. But this part about security, because we talk about PDL, you know, this consensus algorithm safeguard sensitive information, ensure the integrity of the pin networks. What better to ensure the integrity than a personal data locker? Don't ever overthink it. The research is there if you take the time to get into it. So I'm going to show one more thing with you guys. And basically this is this right here. Um, let me see where it's at real quick. Yes, this is good stuff as well. So this again is also from Coin Telegraph, and this was this time instead of being like two days old from April, but it's still really good. Okay, talks about DPIN, decentralized physical infrastructure. But when you get further down, references the whole thing of Web three. Let me double check my settings. I want to make sure you see you see. Uh, excuse me, see this the screen I'm seeing, and you do. Got so many things going on that I don't want to be on the wrong page for you guys. So. Make sure I'm not muted either. Anyway, so when you get to it, I like this statement. Traditionally, the deployment and management of physical infrastructure, such as telecom networks, cloud services, mobility networks, power grids, everything you see there, Jasmine has a connection to it, have been dominated by large corporations due to their enormous capital requirements and logistics challenges. Yes. But as a result, these corporations had to near a monopoly. Oh, man, I didn't mean to click on that. Yes, near a monopoly on pricing, click off of that, excuse me, conditions and services offered to end users leading to a lack of competition and innovation. Thus, until blockchain and Web3 entered into the particular picture. DPIN, which we know what that means, um, looks to utilize tokens to bootstrap. Think about this, tokens. What kind of tokens? Well, I am leaning towards Jasmine and his token for everything that we've literally covered tonight because everything that it mentions literally is jasmine because jasmine offers every single thing that we've been focusing in regards to deep end. so yes utilizing tokens to bootstrap the deployment of physical infrastructure then creates a network effect that unlocks the novel design of real world based dapps and think about that for a second jasmine is looking to do that we talk about the super wall and so on. You better believe you have to have an amazing DAP. And again, this is where I want to take you to the next part of this. So I wanted to give you guys some examples. <clears throat> some people have pointed out to me, and it's okay. I could take criticism. Max, can we see an example um, of what Jasmine could possibly do? Now, again, I can't just pull something out of a magic hat or anything like that. But I said to myself, well, that makes sense. Is there anything out there? I mean, can we research more about what DPIN has? And if anything, like, can we have something that is tied to dApps or have something that's like a super wallet, right, to give people an idea of what's to come? But it can't be like a nothing burger. Well, well there's nothing here. So can we give a DPIN example and give you guys an actual visual of what is, like, what this would look like for the super wallet? Because, again, don't get it twisted. When you see that super wallet drop, that's another, maybe the top catalyst for Jasmine yet when that happens. So like it says, this comes from a site, and maybe some of you guys are familiar with, Peak Network. I might not be pronouncing that right. But it's from peak.network. Here's a quick example, basically speaking. And I've got to double check if I'm on the right page. Yes, I am. But give us a quick example of what is called Natix Network. Like it says, building a D-PIN smartphone working as AI-powered cameras, collecting what, guys? Valuable mobility data. Ah, yes, you see where Max is going with this. Right, because everything we researched with Jasmine literally speaks about all this stuff. Because I would say like a fat kid on cake, right? So mobility data, the amount of traffic, row conditions. How many times did we give you guys visuals, examples, not just me, Neo X tricks, you name it. We showed you those examples of IoT devices, 
like for instance on a Tesla or um, what you know Sony's looking to build with Honda for their future car. And believe believe it or not, that's coming right long before 2030, I believe. I think it's either between 2026 and 2030, give or take. That's going to be a huge deal. But the point is, the mobility data. The amount of traffic, road conditions, specific areas built on Dashcan app that people can download for free and keep active when driving. The app processes the feed from a phone's camera, turns it into anonymized insights, rewarding the users with what? You got to be kidding me. Tokens for sharing these insights. What is Jasmine looking to do? To give power back to the people. By democratizing their data instead of freely giving it away like everybody does with GAFA. And again, if you're just tuning in, don't know what that means, your Google, your Amazon, your Facebook, your Apple, right? Centralized data. You should look at Jasmine as being the crypto knight of that. The phones, like it says, are the physical infrastructure network and the mechanism powering this network and issuing the rewards runs on chain. Runs on chain. Isn't that exactly? What Jasmine's looking to do with an AI blockchain solution, a layer two solution with this roll up. And then taking everything from the PDL, right? The personal data locker and storing on chain where? On a web three storage solution through what? Something like Polkadot. Well, I should say something like Polkadot, Polkadot, right? So all these things that people criticize during crypto winter oh get out of jazz man i don't like v2s and stuff like that right like some of these guys i like i have a lot of respect for them right it's just a difference of opinion it's not me trying to be disrespectful to them not like that at all but i did realize the greater picture of things a lot of these guys looked at this as like well i seen this bull crap happen with a meme token and i will be with you but understand this is not a meme token we may have a community that is like the you know like a meme token, which is cool. We have utility, and yes, a lot of V2s suck. I get that, but this is a totally different thing. This is a perfect case of apples and oranges, no pun intended. So deep pin sector map and look what it blankets on your visual, physical resource networks, wireless networks, mobility networks, agriculture networks. Again, back to the whole thing of the Rice Crop Consortium. It's cool. Well, say what you want. The Rice Crop Consortium is a real thing. Look into it. And Jasmine, the connections they have. Energy networks. Health networks. Again, a re-reminder. If you're brand new to all this, Jasmine and Ripple. Yes, Ripple. Ripple XRP. Share one common partner. And who is that? The CARE Project. Jasmine also attended IVS Crypto 2023 last year. Who was the diamond sponsor of that event? It was Ripple. So again, it's it's kind of like, the, you know, as the saying goes, birds of feather flock together. They might not have direct partnerships, but indirectly they do. Digital resource networks, bandwidth networks, storage networks, compute networks. It's all a big deal. And it's all worth pointing out. So... I want to share you guys this other thing real quick, and I'm going to pull this up. Here it is. This is the example. This is the visual that I wanted to give you, and please do not misinterpret this. I know some people kind of like fast forward to certain parts, and they're going to, you know, I, I can imagine at some point some Yahoo, no offense, is going to say, Max said that this is the super wallet. No, I did not say this is the super wallet. But if anything, I wanted to finally give you guys an actual idea with visuals of what is to be expected to come with the super wallet. That's why I'm showing you this. And that's why I gave you a full breakdown, a deep dive of what is to be expected, what is to, be co to come from this thing that we're all waiting for. And that's the super wallet. Okay. And how huge that would be for Jasmine. Okay. So check this out. If anything, I'm going to come out of the frame for a moment. So look at this, guys. Here is a great example for you. This is the visual from Natix web, uh, Network. And I understand they have their own token and so on. But again, it's D pin, guys. Think about the, you know, think about the bigger picture for what Jasmine's looking to accomplish. 
Do we see something in regards to Zhangshan that would be similar? I honestly think so. And I could be completely wrong. I'm not going to be the guy that comes on a live show every day and strokes my ego and say, you know, I'm right every day. No, I'm not like that at all. I could very well be wrong. But if anything, say what you want. Everything we just learned tonight, I think, adds up to something like this. And here's why. So it says drive and detect earn and improve your city what city well maybe um a smart city wherever you go natives drive and allows you to earn with every drive anywhere anytime get the drive app on google i mean you can play around with it right now if you want you know but the point is to see something is an actual example how does this thing work well look what it says download the app google play and when you get more into it, it gives you a visual. And look at this visual for a second. It says, for instance, finish detecting, save, dash cam on. You know, I mean, it's real basic. But it says, place the phone on the dashboard and keep the app active mode when driving. Again, an Internet of Thing device. Getting more into this, look at this other thing. Earn points while driving, redeem them for products, services, and soon our native crypto token, NTXT. Now, why would I point this out? Well, for one, it's a visual. And number two, you want to have an idea of what is to come when it comes to this whole thing with Jasmine. I think, honestly, Jankshin and what we're going to be doing here soon with Jasmine through this AI thing is going to be something similar to this or maybe even better. Maybe it just blows this out of the water. But think about this for a second. Back to what you see. Jasmine allows you to be able to monetize your data, earn points, contribute towards society, right? It's a win-win situation, okay? So I do think this is a great example. Nadix is this particular thing that they're doing with DPIN, and it's just an example. But what about Jasmine having not just what Nadix is doing, but so many other things that contribute towards not just like the concept of society 5.0, but the road ahead. So when you see, for instance, this whole concept of, you know, there's going to be big pumps and all that. What about being able to still realize that Jasmine is continuously innovating and it's that road to where we need to get called the promised land, called whatever you want. I'm not trying to be religious at, at this point. I think it's a huge, huge deal, and that's why I wanted to bring it to you guys. I'm going to show you guys this a tad bit more, so I will come out back out of the frame again to get more into this. So, it, like it says, ways to earn. I, I know you don't see this part, but, you know, we're going to get to that. But the part on the middle, excuse me. The middle part and the right part. Pay attention to this part. Minimal data uses. The app consumes a minimal amount of data, protecting data plans and keeping costs down. Say what you want. I think Jasmine's going to do the same thing. What about smart fraud detection? Now, if you guys saw the deep dive I did the other day, I did talk about this whole thing about fraud with Jasmine, right? We talked about this. Hedera is, is doing something similar. Jasmine is also trying to tackle the whole thing about fraud. So you do see this. That's worth pointing out. Ways to earn gives this whole thing about a breakdown. Again, so many different ways to earn, even when somebody is utilizing Jasmine's utility and dry, you know going uh, through Tokyo or, or you know uh, going on a bullet train or whatever the case be. Right? It's these incentives and how you can earn. And you know, like it says, what happens? You know. Uh, when you're detecting some of these things. So referrals, again, all sorts of incentivized rewards to, you know, benefit not only you, but benefit the society or society 5.0 or smart cities. So this is why I wanted to share this with you guys. And like it says, I mean, it, this app is not just for tour guides, truck drivers, so on and again i understand this is natix and if anything maybe some of you guys want to get into natix but the point is to give you an actual idea of what d pin is and to combine this if you will with something like jasmine i think is a huge i you know i think it's a huge deal personally i really do feel that way
In conclusion, if you're wondering, is there anything else to go with this? Well, yes. Here's the answer. Back on January 19th, if you attended that AMA, you already know a little bit about D-PIN. Maybe you don't, you don't know all the other connections, or maybe you didn't put it all together, and that's okay too. But the point is recognizing how it all comes back full circle with Jasmine, for real. Because like it says, Jasmine Lab and Big Hit, uh, Bit Get Japan AMA will be held, right? Yeah, we've already been there, already done that. How will D-PIN and real-world assets change the world? That's why I gave you this whole outline. To give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And it, it may be even way better than what you saw from, and this is no bash on, you know, Nadix, but it, it could be way more than that. And I would expect it to be because of what all the different industries that Jasmine's part of. You know, it's like this. I and mean, this is my summary. Okay. Before we actually really wrap this up. <clears throat> so, Jankshin. I don't have the exact details on Jankshin, but I did my best to try to give you an idea of what I believe it to be through the connection of DPIN and also AI. I think there's going to be something big that's going to come out of this. And I'm not putting pressure on Hara. I understand there could be some NDAs that you can't come out with anything just yet. But understand this. Jankshin, partner up with Jasmine, for instance, or Hara being the head honcho of that. Jankshin is part of D-PIN. You know, for the most part, I think we established that because it literally says Jankshin and D-PIN times AI combination. Well, at the end of the day, what would Jankshin be? What exactly is it? What does it mean, especially for Jasmine moving forward? Well, we outlined some of that. But my conclusion is this, and it's basically like this. If I had to pinpoint exactly what Jankshin is, I would say it's a platform that enables easy access to blockchain-based services, such as cryptocurrencies, like we showed on the, uh, let me just double check what it's called, Nadix Network, right? Still trying to remember all this stuff. And basically speaking, you know, it's like, hmm, interesting. Cryptocurrencies, other digital assets. Jankshin is part of DPIN. We established that. And it's a larger ecosystem that aims to provide various blockchain services to consumers and especially businesses. When we talk about Jasmine's reach, is it just retail or is it also businesses? Well, yes. It is also businesses. It's small and medium enterprise. We know that Jasmine is a blockchain-based platform that focuses on Internet of Things, but also trying to get into finance democracy and some of these other things, trade. But it's also especially a decentralized data marketplace. It's not there yet, but it will be. By partnering with Jankshin, especially having Hara as your main plug now, Jasmine can leverage the platform's capabilities to expand its services. Yes, its services. And make it easier for users to access and utilize the Jasmine ecosystem. I think you're going to find out that Jankshin is going to be an absolute huge, huge deal. For Jasmine, this partnership means increased exposure and accessibility to, of course, a wider audience. That's what we all want. The path towards not just 107 million users that we could easily do, like Hara pointed out, but then some. But it's also going to potentially lead to more users and increased adoption of Jasmine's blockchain based IoT and data marketplace solutions. That is utility in motion because you have the marketplace there to make it all happen. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, there's so many different cases of marketplaces, whether it's an eBay or you name it, marketplaces equal utility of some form in motion, whether it's payments or in this case, in regards to, for instance, Internet of Things and how much money that's going to be worth. Let's just call it that, right? So, so much more than money, but it's a big deal. So I feel as though that this whole thing with Jankshin is going to allow Jasmine to specifically benefit from Jankshin's user-friendly interface. I mean, 
yes, I don't know exactly what Jiangshan is, but again, I could do enough research to see what's connected to. If Hara never dropped the whole thing of Jiangshan, D pin, and AI, I don't think I would have had nothing to go off of, but he did, and it gave me something to go off of. But I do think that this whole thing is going to come out here soon. He's going to have to address it at some point. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him to do so. But I think we will see that Jiangshan with Jasmine will make it easier for users to interact with what, guys? Jasmine's offerings through all the examples that we share tonight in regards to what? D-Pin. So understand the bigger picture. And if anything, this is why I brought you guys this info. I feel as though it's huge and we will continue to see Jasmine grow. I think Sky is the limit from here, personally speaking. You may see some retracement. You may see some pullbacks. You may see other things out there like manipulation from Binance or whatever the case be. But I don't think what you see here recently just stops where it's at right now. There's a lot of big things on the near horizon for Jasmine. And it's been a pleasure covering this for well over a year. Shout out to anybody who's part of a community. The guys that put in the time long before me, like Jesse, KIR Finance. Guys like Dip Metaverse. Our brother, Icy Amphibian. You know, other people that came around maybe the same time as me. Neo X Tricks. Menelaguar, you name it. If you're part of the Jasmine community, you are a very proud person at this particular point. And you have more than survived FUD. And hopefully you didn't let your emotions during the crypto winter steal or rob you out of your future generational wealth.